The middle blocker position in volleyball is not an easy one and many players struggle with blocking and hitting quick sets in the middle of the net. But uh, the job of a middle blocker isn't just uh, blocking and attacking. Uh, what all should a middle blocker know? How should he think about his own game and the uh, other team's game? Uh, what should he or she focus on? What numbers and efficiency should they have uh, in their game? I will answer all of that in this video that will help you become an excellent middle blocker. In my career I have met a lot of great and weaker blockers. Uh, some I feared as an outsider and others I exploited because I knew about their weaknesses. But today I don't want to give you advice on how to outsmart a blocker, but instead I want to advise blockers to do their job even better and become a real threat on the block, on offense and even on the surf. But first, let's talk about the basic volleyball skills that every middle blocker should master. Certainly the most important skill is blocking, because middle blockers are block specialists. Similarly to what I talked about in this video, where I spoke about becoming a great setter. Blocking is the main job of a middle blocker, because when he's on the net, he can block all attackers. Middle blocker always starts his defensive work at the middle of the net and he or she can move all over the net. We also rely on middle blockers to have the most points on the block of any player. The other skill that a middle blocker brings points to a team is attacking. Unlike as outside hitter or opposite, he usually doesn't get many sets after a bad reception or defense beyond 3 meters. Sure, there are great setters who play with middle blockers even from these positions. But most their attacks are after balls that are passed into the 3 meter zone and usually still high into the hands of setters rather within the first meter or two of the net. Every middle blocker must also control the serve. In men's volleyball we see a lot of uh, jump float serves uh, from middle blockers, but the trend and the development for the future is that middle blockers uh, will also be serving more and more strong jump serves. In women's volleyball the jump float serve is uh, still dominating by middle blockers. That could be the end of the line for some, only it's not. Yes, if you want to be an average middle blocker, blocking, attacking and serving uh, can be enough uh, and you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But uh, this is not enough, uh, because if you want to be a really good uh, middle blocker, you have to be a complex player. You also need to be a good at uh, defending in the field. I understand, you can argue that uh, you only play in the field after your serve, uh, otherwise you are replaced uh, by a libero. On the other hand, uh, every point and touch of the ball can mean uh, winning the match and sometimes it can just uh, be your good defense or on the contrary your big mistake in defense. And also you must not forget to practice setting. I know some uh, blockers who are great at blocking and attacking but once the ball is uh, coming at them and they have to set it, uh, it usually doesn't go well. They can't pass a high set uh, to their outside hitters whether they bump or with overhand pass. But it's not only about your volleyball skills, uh, you need to develop your mental skills too. And middle blocker is responsible for the block when he's at the net. Similarly, a setter is responsible for setting or a libero is responsible for defending in the field. The middle blocker's job is to observe what is happening on the other side of the net uh, when the other team is attacking. He observes the setter closely and tries to read his play, trying to find the setter's schemes. It's the personal battle, me versus your setting. He watches uh, the other team's attackers and evaluates the uh, directions of their attacks, which he then tries to stop uh, with the other defensive players on, at the net. He's a defensive leader, but he doesn't uh, make decisions on his own. He doesn't play alone as he pleases, uh, because defense is not just about blocking, but also about uh, field work. That's why he actively communicates uh, with the libero and coach about their team tactics in defense. He works uh, for the team uh, doing his uh, job, uh, which is sometimes hard uh, and not uh, so visible. Imagine after a good reception you always have to be uh, available to the setter, you always jump up, but the setter doesn't set uh, to you several times uh, in a row. That's the type of uh, black work that uh, doesn't directly bring you points, uh, on the other hand uh, it can help the team around you a lot uh, because the blocker on the other side uh, often jumps out uh, with you and your attackers then get a set against a single block that makes uh, important points uh, for the team. The middle blocker is always focused, uh, calm in his defensive work. He helps and advises his teammates at the net. 
He also doesn't live unnecessary on uh, previous actions, but always thinks uh, ahead to the next action. He's thinking, uh, how do we defend the next attack? Am I going uh, to go forward to block their outside hitter? If they get a good pass, I'll jump uh, with a mid blocker. Do I leave the outside hitter alone against the back row attack uh, because I know their opposite isn't as strong? These and uh, similar questions are asked uh, by the middle blockers uh, all the time. He is constantly uh, evaluating the play, adapting and doesn't want to be fooled uh, by the opposing uh, setter. To get a better idea of what a middle blocker's performance should look like, let's look at the numbers and the percentage uh, that uh, clearly show what can be considered a good performance. Because sometimes it may seem to us as coaches that our middle blocker plays uh, below average or on the contrary absolutely fantastic during the match. But after the match, uh, the numbers and facts uh, can surprise us positively or negatively. The numbers of blocks are very dependent on the opponent's uh, reception. If the opponent is uh, passing well, they will also have more efficiency in attack. On the other hand, if they pass poorly, we have a great chance to block or defend uh, their attacks in the field. Anyway, in uh, women's volleyball and uh, by the indication of um, American volleyball, the middle blocker should reduce the opponent's uh, success rate to 35% against our block. The middle blocker should always have uh, more positive touches on the ball than negative touches uh, on the ball according to American ideas. Uh, for women that's uh, 5 positive touches to 3 bad ones. Personally I have also experience with the men Russian approach, which focused primarily on the number of uh, blocks per set. To play a good match, a middle blocker should average 1.5 blocks per set, uh, that is 6 blocks per 4th set match. In attack, after good reception, a good middle blocker should have a 60% success rate on attack. Make a point on 6 out of 10 sets if you are talking about uh, men's volleyball. And 44% success rate in women's volleyball as imagined by USA Volleyball. He should not make more than one error on attack or be blocked on uh, no more than one out of ten attacks. In attack, during transition, of course, the efficiency of all players decreases, but the blocker should still be around 50% for men or make at least three points out of nine opportunities and have a 33% efficiency for women's volleyball. Even if middle blockers are only in one position in defense, they cannot have a zero success on defense in the field. They too should defend at least 40% of the attacks in their zone. That means uh, out of 10 attacks uh, they should defend 4 balls and ensure the continuation of the play. And also with uh, setting we can't be kind to high middle blockers, uh, we have to demand a quality high set uh, from them too, 80% of the time. By quality I mean a set that goes high to air, is inside the sideline and about meter or two from the net. So those were the numbers, uh, let's go back to the blocking itself. I mentioned earlier that the most uh, important activity of the middle blocker is blocking. So let's go through his uh, blocking checklist uh, during the game. Incoming attack analysis. In each rotation I imagine what possible attacks uh, the opponent can use. I remember what they played in this rotation a few balls ago. I analyze what attacks can come in the end of the sets, uh, where they strong attackers are and what their preferred attacks are. Power position. I am ready in the power position. My legs are slightly bent, my weight is on the, my toes. My hands are up uh, so I can react to the attacks as quickly as possible. See the pass. If the opponent's uh, reception flies over the net to our side, what do I do with it? Is the setter in the front zone? Can he block me? Do I hit the ball? Do I block it? Or do I play it out for my setter? If their opponent has an ideal pass, what can I expect? The opponent hasn't passed well. Where is the best chance uh, for them to attack? I'm constantly thinking and evaluating uh, each situation. See the setter. I observe the setter, his movements to the ball, possible directions to where he can set the ball. Aware of quick attacks. I watch my attacker first. Middle blocker on the other side. Is he getting a lot of sets? Is he attacking effectively? Or has he not received a set in two sets? Do I jump ahead with him? Do I wait for him to attack? Or do I let him hit without the block? I have to make a quick decision. I watch his shoulder and the possible direction of attack while I put my hands. Outside attacks. Ok, the blocker didn't attack, the set goes to the outside hitter. My job is to move uh, to that spot as quickly as possible and try to block. If I feel I can't make it, I don't try to reach there with my hands at all costs. I prefer to leave a hole in the block, but I want my hands over the net. I don't want to be used uh, by the attacker. 
outsider movements. If I'm successful and I'm facing an uh, outside hitter attack, I watch his movements closely. Will he attack down the line or is he going for a sharp diagonal? I know that my job is to set up a compact block uh, so that the hitter doesn't hit between our block or use our double block. On the other hand, if I see his intention to attack diagonally at most, I will push my arms over the net and to block his attack. Now let's look at the offensive checklist uh, that a middle blocker should have coded in his head during the game, either before serving of the opponent or during transition. See the serve. Middle blocker has to see the serve. He should shuffle or open up uh, for possible attack. Middle blocker should be able to find the right spot where to be ready for attack. See the pass. Uh, then he's watching reception and he or she is adjusting approach and timing. See the setter. Once the ball is coming to setter's hands, uh, middle blocker is loading to setter. He or she is jumping and showing readiness for attack. Attack. If the middle blocker is receiving set uh, from setter, he's swinging and attacking. Uh, during attack, he's also watching uh, opponent's uh, blockers and uh, changing where he aims to attack. If the setter is not setting to middle blocker, he lands on the court and immediately is trying to get to defensive position or even make uh, steps to cover his attacking teammate. So that's pretty much detailed advice and tips for middle blockers. How to think, what to focus on and how to play. I believe that this advice will help you become a great middle blocker. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.